this is part two of a video chat with um, David and Vega, as well as myself, Carl, and Kirsty. Um, we're both, oh, we're all four of us talking about being in an interabled relationship. And part one of this video is on David and Vega's channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description. And we're just asking each other some questions. So we've got uh, 10 more questions, five questions each. So we'll just get straight into it. And if you want to watch the first half of the video, uh, I'll make sure that there's a link in the description. Great. All right. Okay. So what's the best thing for you both about being in an interable couple? Oh, well, the best thing is that, uh, that is, that I can be with David because <laughs> If he, if I wouldn't be in, in an interable couple, I wouldn't be with David. Then I would be with someone else. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, but I think it's true because we're, you're together with a person and I'm the person I am with my disability, not in spite of or not due to or thanks to, but this is me. So the only possibility for me to be with Vega is to be in an interabled relationship. So that's, the best part is you as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> very good answer. Very good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our question, what is one thing that people seem to think about you as a couple that is totally wrong? I, I think from my perspective, uh, people often think that Kirsty has to do everything for me mm. all the time. Um, and that's because I need quite a lot of personal assistance, you know, things like um, you know, help with food and, and getting dressed and that type of thing. Uh, but people automatically assume that, that Kirsty would be the one having to do all of that yeah. um, when that's not the case. You know, I've got mm -hmm. other people to do that. So, you know, we can you know, live a, a relatively, you know, normal um, life as a couple um, without having all of the, the caregiving or the caring stuff get in the way of that I suppose yeah and I think people yeah. also um sort of assume that I would be the one doing all the cooking and cleaning in the house um but it's often Carl that cooks dinner with his support workers so it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and, and th you know, even things like um you know like I might not be able to vacuum the floors but I've I've got like a robot vacuum that I can turn on and Same here this. as well. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's there's things that you you do to yeah. to make sure that um, you know, things are, are quite equal in the mm. in a relationship. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think another thing that people um, assume is that because Carl can't do sort of more physical activities or you know, really adventurous things like bushwalking, that I can't do it either. But I would just you know do it with someone else, or you know, if there was yeah, somewhere I wanted to go, I would go with someone else. So my mum and I went to um, India recently because it oh. was very wheelchair accessible for Carl. <laughs> um, yeah, so it didn't mean I couldn't go. I just, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so, you know, even though we didn't do that together, you know, we still talk to each other on the phone um, mm. and, you know, we've got, got our own kind of separate lives but still being together. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So... Do kids stare at or um, ask David lots of questions about his disability? Is that something that bothers you or do you not mind? No, I, I, I never mind. It doesn't bother me because I'm very used to it. Um, A lot it, of children do stare, uh, uh, but they also ask the questions. What, what is that you're sitting on? Yeah, is, because, it, is it a car or is it a bicycle? <laughs> because my ma manual wheelchair is a self-invented tricycle, which I pedal on. So people, uh, children laugh because they think it's funny to see an, an, a grown-up man in a, in a tricycle, uh, on a tricycle. Some say, oh, it's like the circus. <laughs> yeah. But it's more fun when children do it. And the thing that can bother me is when parents try to silence the kids because they're ashamed. Uh, so I always talk to the children and say to the, encourage the parents that it's good that they ask, otherwise they will be really insecure later in life uh, if they're not allowed to ask now and the thing that irritates me is only when the uh, adult people just stare because yeah. adult people can 
could ask the question as well. Um, mm. For us, yeah. it's not wrong to ask like, oh, what is that? Why do you sit in that chair or whatever? But most, yeah. most adults just stare quite hard. And that's, yeah. I don't really like that. And usually we try to answer, but if we don't have time, we just, I'm sorry, I don't have time right now, but yeah. it's good that you asked. Thank you for uh, asking. Thank you for asking, yeah. I, I agree. I think, um, you know, when, when kids ask questions, you know, they're never being, um, you know, malicious or, or mm -hmm. rude. They're just, um, you know, wanting to know the answer and, and just being in inquisitive, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so. some kids just think your wheelchair is cool and want to say how cool the wheelchair is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, say and, hi. <laughs> yeah. And kids, you know, once once they once they know the answer, they normally um, you know, move on pretty quick and and just think mm. that it's normal. Yeah. It's good for to learn at a young age. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So here's our question: What did your friends and family think when you first got together? I think, you know, for me. Um, my friends and family didn't really, you know, they didn't really have many comments. Um, they, you know, you know, I'm an adult. They let me kind of do what I want. Um, you know, I suppose as long as uh, they thought I was happy, then they were happy as well, um, which, you know, I am. I, <laughs> I was, still am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and then they like Kirsty and they get along well and so that's, you know, all good. Yeah. Yep. And then um, for me, I think that some people were a bit concerned about how being with Carl might change my life. Um, oh yeah. Well, they might have thought there was some things that I wouldn't be able to do because I was with Carl. Um, but now everyone's completely fine with it. They all really like Carl. Um, they can see that we're really happy together um, and that, yeah, my life hasn't changed really. It's gotten better. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, Still doing everything that I would have wanted to do, working full time, and yeah, we're really happy together. So yeah, it's all yeah. everyone's nice and supportive now, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> I think that you know, there's no huge sacrifice or any, mm. you know, you don't don't really have to give up much, you know. Hopefully, um, to be with each other, so that's mm. that's good. Um, yeah. And you know, lots of that is to do with you know having a good a good disability system where you know I can get support to be independent. Mm, yeah. That's really useful. Yeah. 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 Same here. So, uh, similar question to one that that uh, you asked in in your video on on your channel. Um, how does the disability support system work in in Sweden? Um, do you have you know eligibility criteria? Do you need to you know pay for caregivers yourself, um, or does you know, the government help pay for some of them. Yes, we have, we have a, a good system that has been unfortunately failing more and more over the last years due to economical reasons. Uh, but I hope that they will restore it as soon as possible because some people are losing their assistance right now. We have a personal assistance law, you could say, where you are awarded hours depending on the amount of help that you need. So it's a completely individual system as well as as it is in Australia, I gather. But it's you're not allowed to use the money for anything else. The money is only to pay for salaries for personal assistance, which you can take care of yourself or use a company to uh, arrange everything for you. Um, and then you you can have special welfare support as well if you need if you can't work full time or if you need pension or something else, but you will get that as any other person would have gotten it, regardless if it's due to disability that you cannot work or something else. So sure. that will be awarded in a wholly different system than the support from personal assistance. Um, wheelchairs and equipment like that, you usually lend from the government, you can say, or from the region. Um, depending on what the help you need. So I never buy my electrical wheelchair or my manual wheelchair. Um, I will be lent the, the equipment that they assume that I need, which can be both good and bad because I don't have to pay for it. But on the other hand, I won't get the money to buy the thing that I need. So let's say that 
I will get nine, uh, an electrical wheelchair to the value of 9,000 euros. I cannot add 500 euros to buy a bit better one. Mm-hmm. I will get yeah. that one. So I, I have no chance of affecting the choice. I will get mm-hmm. the equipment that the professionals think that I need, or I will have to buy another one completely by myself, which mm-hmm. is a shame. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So as in every system, it's good and bad parts. But I think that is pretty bad that I cannot choose a better one or a more active one or a nicer one. Let's say I care about rims <laughs> on the wheels. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot affect that. Or something yeah. that you really do need, but they don't think that you need, then, they, then you won't get it. Yeah, so I will get $700 rims or 700 euro rims, but I cannot add 100 euros to buy the ones that I need. If they cost 800, then I would have mm-hmm. to buy completely new ones. Mm. I, I will get the things that I, they deem that I need, but I can't affect it. Okay. And for some people, I mean, I mean, appearance is important. Rims are important. It's a part of your lifestyle and a part of your personality. Um, and I think those things aren't valued, which is a shame. With a with personal care system, the, the, the hours that I get for, to pay for personal assistance is valued on my needs. Not, unfortunately, when we have a child, on me being a father. So that won't go into the hours that I need. Mm. Yeah. You, it's, yeah. It's only for the most important thing in life. Yeah. What they think is the most important thing in life. Uh, it's not eating anymore. No. The, the, it's, no. It's, it, it's a quite a technical system as well. Yeah, but... it's like eating, hygiene, they have different steps that they check and but working or being a father is not part of the need, uh, part of the needs oh. which is a shame so you won't get any hours uh, of caregiving because of that, of that. No. hopefully the hours will be enough anyway but but uh, yeah. i won't get extra no. you think a lot about children with disabilities but you don't think a lot about children who has parents with disabilities because that's a new thing it's yeah. a new thing in society mm. yeah yeah so um yeah hopefully that will improve and i think it's always good to you know it's good to be um appreciative of the help that you've got but also still know that there, there are room for improvements mm. yes so, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah good comment i think <laughs> really, um, interesting to know how they do it in different countries yeah yeah, yeah. What's the best thing about being an interabled couple? Um, so other than, I guess, being with Carl, um, we get a lot of perks um, from Carl's disability. So, you know, getting good parking, um, we get into lots of parking for free, you get into movies for free. Um, oh, I get into free Carl pays. <laughs> um, yeah, concerts, um, and then we often get, We've been to a few gigs where they sort of get us to the front of the stage so that we can see properly. So that's good. Um, yeah, that's handy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even even you know when when we went to to Europe at the start of this year, um, we went to lots of places and we got kind of free admission. I uh, didn't even have to ask for it. You know, they saw mm. the they saw the person in a wheelchair and then they gave us a free ticket. So um, you know, didn't turn that down. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I think. Um, and there's some of the perks that Kirsty gets. Yeah. <laughs> but also, um, you know, it's good having someone who can walk around because they, you know, Kirsty can reach things in the top cupboard that I can't or um, pick things up off the floor. Um, and just, you know, the fact that you can walk around is always pretty <laughs> impressive because that's not something <laughs> that I can. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's, I think, you know, it's, it's about just, you know, we both get along well with each other, so that's the most important thing mm. yeah um so what did your family and friends think when you first got together uh i guess my friends were quite impressed oh, it's david lega oh my god <laughs> <laughs> because they knew who he was uh yeah they were happy and uh, my mom and dad were really happy when they saw how happy i was um so yeah 
it's just all good. Yeah, and the same with my friends and family as well. They were really happy. Uh, I think people saw quite quickly that how happy we were together because we have the same kind of humor and everything. So it, it shows that we are very happy when we're together. Yeah. I think. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. So it was never, what if, have you thought of this? No. No. And also because people know that I won't have to be the carer 24 seven. Yeah. It wasn't mm -hmm. a question about how can you, no, no, I think that people view me as a very independent person with a disability. Mm. And they never consider that I am it due to their personal assistance. Mm. <laughs> that is why I'm independent. I'm independent with them. Uh, but I have them, so. Here's a question. Mm. If you ever fight, what would it be about? And when you laugh together, what do you laugh about the most? Uh, I think, you know, normally we... Um, you know, we're luckily we don't fight too much, yeah. um, which is a, a good thing. Um, I mean, at, at the moment in Australia, we're, we're under um, a lockdown, so we're mm. having to spend lots of time at home. So, I mean, you know, you, you kind of see each other a lot. You know, we're both working from home. Um, so that gets a bit tricky sometimes, yeah. um, you know, sharing the same space with someone mm. for so long. But, but that's, that's fine. Um, I think, yeah, you know, just... Um, just you know, small little fights, nothing, nothing major. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do what do you think? What do we fight about? No, I don't. I, yeah, just I guess little things. Um, especially at the moment, spending twenty four seven together all the time. Little, yeah, <laughs> little random things can become annoying. <laughs> um, but no, we don't fight too much. Yeah, um, and yeah, we have a similar sense of humor, so we. Sort of like the same yeah. sort of weird things. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and you and enjoy the same TV shows. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, and you know, like satire and things like that. And yeah, um, yeah. Nah, we get along pretty well. Um, I think um, uh, you know, being living together and um, being in a lockdown where we can't go out very often and have to work from home is a good a good test of any relationship because. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're with each other twenty four seven, um, yeah. and yeah, it's going going pretty good so far. Yeah, <laughs> we had the same <laughs> discussion. That yeah. I I don't believe there was any any other person in the world that I would stand being around for for so long <laughs> for four months twenty four seven. But uh, with you, it's yeah. just yeah. perfect. Yeah, I worry about not seeing you every day when I go back to Brussels and working. So, yeah. what TV shows are you watching? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting Kirsty to watch Breaking Bad, which is a... That's a good one. I have seen that's a bit of a, a serious um, serious one. Just random reality TV shows. Yeah, you know, some... <laughs> We've got it into. Yeah, there's like a, a mixture of serious shows and the ones that you want to watch when you want to switch your brain off. Mm. Yeah. And don't want to, um, don't want to think if you've had a big day at work. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, watch yeah. Uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt when we're eating, <laughs> usually yeah. on Netflix, otherwise, a comedy show. Otherwise, David is more into superheroes than yep. me. Okay, um, yeah. All the Superman, yeah. Spider-Man, or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But we're watching yeah. The Umbrella Academy together. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, there, there are some shows that we have to watch separately because, um, yeah, I don't, don't think Kirsty will want to watch those type of things with me. Um, but that's all right, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what we love? We love Lego Masters Australia. Oh, that's okay. brilliant. Yeah. yeah, we saw all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for the next, next season. <laughs> oh, you know, you, you get that all the way out there. Yeah, we have it on uh, via internet. So. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. Lego Masters Australia is the best one. That's the best one. It's better than the UK one or the US one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best okay. the, the host was a, um, like a radio radio presenter. Yeah, probably. Oh, he was funny. Yeah, he was really good. <laughs> yeah, we like him. That's why yeah. we the show, I think. Yeah. Was <laughs> it was also sweet. They were, everyone was friendly and yeah. <laughs> just happy. <laughs> so last question for you guys. Do you have any funny stories related to your, uh, tra funny travel stories um, related to your disability needs? There is one time when we were in uh, Israel. 
that was funny. That yeah, was funny the with pool. the pool. We had we were we stayed at a hotel that had a, an outside pool, and it was really lovely weather. And uh, we went swimming, and my my caregiver helped me down by the edge of the pool. And people got so worried because with paralyzed arms and no muscles almost in in my legs, they assumed that I couldn't swim. I mean, they don't know that I was a Paralympic swimmer 20 years ago. So. <laughs> you you don't look like a, uh, a yes. really good swimmer. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, so the caregiver helped you down from the wheelchair to the edge of the pool. And people were really... And then he left. Yeah, and then he just walked away. And people were like, oh my God, what's going to happen now? So it was like, oh my God. And I dove in. And, and then started... just like, bloop. <laughs> I don't think some of the other guests they don't they didn't take the eye their eyes off me for the 30 40 minutes I was in the pool because oh, yeah. he's going to drown soon he's going to drown soon yeah, but he was just swimming around yeah it was funny and, and he, he didn't drown so that's good really. yeah <laughs> that would be bad embarrassing yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad yeah <laughs> so do you normally you know find it okay finding you know accessible accommodation um, when you're traveling? Yeah, I don't think we need that much. Um, yeah. Some of the toilets in hotel rooms are too small. Mm. But as long mm -hmm. as I can come in there and there is a shower and not a bathtub, we're fine for a few days. Sure. Um, if we need to stay longer. We had quite a bit of trouble when we tried to get the apartment in, in Brussels. Because since I, I work in Belgium, we need an apartment there as well. Mm -hmm. And that took several months. Even, even if there are plenty of free apartments, they usually had... A bathtub. Bathtub or walk-in showers with, with a high... Like yeah. a half bathtub shower yeah. with a high edge uh, into it or step into it. And I need it completely flat to be able to roll in on a special stool. Mm -hmm. But um, that took a long time. Yeah, and almost all the hotels in different countries have the thick carpets that I have to push him really hard. <laughs> <laughs> they're heavy. Yeah, they're heavy. They're heavy. But otherwise, yeah. I don't think since the wheelchair is quite small, the manual one, we don't travel with the electrical wheelchair. No. I have one of those smart drives that I could put on. Uh, An extra engine. Uh, to to put on the man manual chair to get extra push help if I need it uphill. Yeah, but we've been in some hotels that had had really small bathroom. Yeah. Like you could ex precisely get into the toilets. Yeah. Stand in the <laughs> hallway way and uh, pee from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> in an emergency. <laughs> we might cut that part. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't happened, I promise. <laughs> Hypothetically. <Yeah>. Hypothetically. <laughs> okay. So what do you like the most about each other? Oh, I think we have a lot of fun together. Um, yeah, we laugh a lot, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have a lot of fun together and have similar interests and, um, you know, we can cheer each other up if we're feeling a bit, a bit stressed or down. Um, mm. or, or, you know, if, if we're a bit anxious about something, we can hopefully calm each other down, that type of thing. Um, hopefully, you know, bring out the best in each other and mm. encourage each other to, you know, do well at work and things like that. And yeah, yeah just um, yeah. get along well. <laughs> it's a tricky, tricky question to answer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Great. Well, thank you for um, taking the time to, to chat with us. Like, yeah. thank you so much, and thank you for staying up so late in Australia. Oh, it's, it's not too late, not too late. Thank you, David and, and Vega, for chatting with us. Um, we're finishing, finishing our chat. Uh, again, part one of the chat is available on David and Vega's channel, and I'll put that uh, in the comments or in the description. Um, and yeah, thanks again for chatting with us, and we'll keep in touch. Definitely. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.